This is uh, Bob Weiner. We're going to do a demonstration of hyperbole 5.15 and show uh, specifically the first part will be what's called high control, which is uh, frame and window control from within inside Emacs and hyperbole. So we just bring up the hyperbole mini buffer menu, and there you can see we have a screen menu right there. So we'll hit S. And then we can either decide to control windows or frames. So let's start with frames right here. And we'll, well, I'll just say, uh, let's expand the frame. We'll widen it by, I, I think I did it too much, so let's narrow it again. And then I'll change it to 30 units that we'll be moving by. And I'll say widen the frame by 30. So that's an example of one thing you can do in high control. Is so you, when you're in the frame menu, sorry. Mm -hmm. Then you type the prefix argument and then yeah, the so command. Yeah, so you don't have to, you just type <clears throat> numbers. There. So as I type numbers, once I go over 1,000, it'll wrap around. So I can just type 2, 3, 4, and it'll be 234. Or I can type a, uh, a decimal point. It depends on the operation. And then I can start again. So a decimal point resets it. So let's say I want to resize the frame. So this is by pixels, yes. So I can heighten the frame, shorten the frame, widen the frame, or narrow it. So let's start with just 10 pixels. Okay, and now we're going to shorten the frame. We can shorten it some more. I think it's 10 That's lines. not 10 pixels. That's 10 lines. Yeah, sorry. There are different things to pixels and lines, but here we want to do it in Emacs terms. So uh, if we widen by 10, we're, we're going by 10 characters, and if we... Heighten by 10, we're going by 10 characters. Does it remember your last prefix argument? So if you hit 2... It stays w, there. It's what's it's ever there. Yeah. It it's remembering. So, okay, but now say like we've made it big. We've got a big frame here, and, and we want to you... make it a percentage of the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, we can, we can also say that we want to expand to the edges with I, J, K, and M. So if I shrink it now, let's shorten it. And let's narrow it. Okay, and then I say, okay, well, I wanted to go to the bottom of the frame with M, and I wanted to go K, so it's just like north, south, east, west, and I've I've just filled my screen with it. And then and then when I want to get out of here, I just hit Q, and I'm done. If you want to move it, let's shrink it again. So now I can use the percentage thing. So let's say I want it to be. 20% of the screen size. So I hit 20 and then I just say percentage. And the whole thing goes down right there. So let's make it 50% uh, now. And we'll go percentage. Now 0.50%. Okay? So if I make it 100%, we know what that'll do. Uh, so I've got a lot of control. Now you wanted to say, how do I move it around the screen? Well, first of all, right. you'll make it 50% width. Okay, right. 50% of the width. Okay, so right there. Was it 50W? Yeah, 50 capital W. Okay. And uh, so now we want to move it around. Does it, sec does it echo? I didn't see it echoing what you typed anywhere. No. It doesn't okay. right now. Maybe if you could say it when you do it, 50W. Oh, you, right, what I'm typing. And... Okay, sure. So, But it's all on the screen right here. So here's percentage and percent H and W. So let's make it, now we want to move it around the screen. So let's, let's shorten it a little by shortening it a lot. Okay, <laughs> so now we want to move it around the screen. And we can use our, our arrows to move around. But we can also say, I want to cycle, cycle around the edges of the screen. And it just cycles, it cycles between the corners and the center. So it goes upper left, then upper center, and then upper right, then the center. Just C to cycle. So notice also that what's happening here is... And there are offsets that I can use so that it doesn't go behind the uh, application bar. We just haven't set them yet right here. So again, I can grow it down. So 
right there, and I'll grow it to the left with J. I just hit M to grow it to the bottom, and J to fill the screen right there. So all of this was just a couple keys. What if I want to uh, make the font bigger? Then a capital Z. Um, oh, we require a separate package. So if I do lowercase z, yeah, that I could probably zoom in, but then I can't zoom out again. One of the things I can do is minimize. What package is that that it requires? There's uh, something called uh, Zoom Frame that you can load, and it just lets you zoom a bunch of frames. We can switch into, if we ever want to go into controlling windows, which we'll do right now, we just hit T, and T switches to window control, as you see on the screen now. Is if I hit T there? again, okay. it goes back to frame. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in windows. So now I want to, uh, my current window, well, O will switch between windows. So, okay, so here's my current window on top. And then I want to grow that, so I heighten it, and the window grows, just like I did before. Or I shorten it, and the window shrinks. If I had, if I sit, if I split it uh, sideways, which I kind of forget right now, sideways, yeah. Okay, so that's a right bracket splits it sideways, and a left bracket splits it horizontally, or vertically, it's called. And so now, if I want to. Uh, uh, narrow narrow the window just n narrows it and uh, w widens it but if i wanted to do that by 12 characters i just type uh, period 12 and and then widen again so i can always change the uh, dimension of my um, my control for most of my functions so now i, I i've got a cluttered screen and i i just want to start deleting windows so just d I'll just delete all the windows and I'm back where I was. Um, if I want to say... Um, Can you split it here? Do you use like a yeah. two or a three to split it? Or? To split it, you just uh, hit uh, the square bracket. Oh, yeah. And it'll split. So now, what if I want to minimize this window? Minus should... Uh, let's uh, maximize the window. So plus maximizes it. Minus will minimize it. Let's say we go to, we got to get out of here to switch buffers right now. But okay, so if I switch to that and I go back into screen control, um, now I want to minimize this window based on how much text is in the buffer. When I say minus, it shrinks it to as small as it can make it. And when I say plus, it makes it as big as it can make it with the other windows that are there. Mm -hmm. So let's delete windows. So we just have one again. And uh, now uh, if I had multiple frames on screen, I could take whatever is in this window and create a new frame out of it with F. Um, I can swap buffers with a bury buffer. So it'll bury that one and go to the next. Or I can do the reverse unbury with a U. And so I can just walk through all these things. And say I had two windows because I split with a, a square bracket. And then I said, let's bury a buffer. Okay. And now I want to swap what's here and there. I just use a tilde. And the tilde swaps the two windows. And that would work if I had uh, two windows side by side. And I buried the buffer. And I switch. Now you're starting to see when I'm not just talking but I'm just operating quickly. And then Q, and I'm back out, and I'm in hyperbole or normal Emacs. So I can call this up. I, I can bind it to a key instead of going through the menus, but for me it's pretty fast to just go into F or W. In fact, I, I, do, I think hyperbole might bind it to a key, uh, if I remember. Yeah, Control-C uh, backslash. So uh, that brings up the window part of high control. So you can get to it directly there, and then just T will switch you into frame control. So, um, and tick turn the current buffer into a frame. You can save a particular window configuration or frame configuration with a forward slash. Mm -hmm. um, you can, oh yeah, we do have a window system here. I forgot about that. So yeah, if we shrink this up, let's just uh, shrink uh, the frame a little bit. So we'll make it by 20 let's say and we'll narrow it 
and we'll uh, shorten it a little. Um, and now we say we want to take the current window, uh, so we'll switch to windows, and we want to make it its own frame, right? Mm -hmm. So I just F, and I just created uh, another frame, and it's got the same buffer in it, and that's the one that I'm controlling. So what if I want to delete that frame, then I just, uh, uh, you know, switch to frame control and say D for delete. Now, I've got a frame and it's a certain size, so what if I want to create a new frame? It'll create it with a C, uh, no, a C is cycle, sorry, to create a new frame, uh, what is that? I just haven't done it in a while. Oh, it's a forward slash. So it's also save for store, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's a, it's the uh, it's the square bracket. Yeah, square bracket. Either one will do it. Square bracket open or square bracket close. Oh, no, that's no, confusing. Yeah. yeah, because that's a, a slash there. So we'll have to do a little on that. But notice that it's offsetting each frame as it creates it, so you know that it created it. And it, that's uh, a variable that you can specify the offset. So also notice that every frame is created at the same size. So what if I, uh, what if I shrink this frame to this size, and now I create another frame? It automatically replicates the size. So you don't have to do anything to get exactly what you want right there. So a lot of the details are handled for you automatically by high control. And then I can switch uh, frames uh, with a capital O. I can switch between all these frames. So if I have and a configuration that I like, can I have my uh, Emacs launch in that configuration? Once we, we have to add persistency to uh, frame configurations and window configurations, and then we will have the capability for you to save it and come back to it. But I saw it said save and load. Yeah, you can for save, only? save configurations. Let's uh, maximize this to the screen so we can see what Chris is talking about. And uh, save restore frame configuration. Yeah, so that's in memory only within the Emacs session. Oh, okay. So, but the concept is just a little more work that we have to do and then we'll be able to do that persistently so um the you can also cycle uh, yeah we did cycle frames so we've seen pretty much uh, all of the commands and having the units on it you can also do uh use the the numbers so with the cycle commands if I shrink, let's shrink this a little bit uh, again, so we'll narrow it, and then we'll shorten it. Um, so when I'm using cycle to move around the screen, I can also use a number, you know, like set the prefix to three, and then when I cycle, it should jump there. Oh, I, ha I think that's on the keyboards. There's also, you can use you know for fine control you can use your cursor keys and mm -hmm. and then there's also probably uh, other options that you can do but uh <clears throat> what do you think of that chris it's very helpful mm -hmm. i think that being able to you can just do so many things so rapidly and then just you know reverse them and uh, expand or move so now I have this on screen and I can just cycle it around the screen put it at whatever edge I want and I don't have to think about it much you know I've only got one key that's doing that and if I had a numeric keyboard all the numbers are mapped to the positions on screen yeah so I can have direct access there too which I could probably put on some you know but you wouldn't know without the layout there. I think the window control for me is a bit more relevant than the screen control. Okay. But so let's go back uh, to that. Because I do use Divi for bouncing right. around my screen. And but I find that not everybody has that. Right. right? Absolutely. So, and if I'm working in different... And once you get used to this, you know, now you're in window. You can't grow a frame that way. But you just grow your windows. And, oh, so arrow will move the frame while you're in window mode too. Mm -hmm. And so if I set it, let's see, if I set the units to uh, 50, let's say, and then I say 
move. Now it's moving by 50 pixels each time. So uh, it's pretty smart about knowing what the argument is and what it should do. Obviously, if you hit delete, it's just going to delete the current window and not the uh, only, but we only have one window there, so it can't delete it. We'd have to go into frame. And then to get back to the buffer and keep working, continue working, it's just uh, Q. Q. Yeah. Like all things in hyperbole, pretty simple, just Q. Now, a new thing in the hyperbole menu is if you hit return and you're not on an item, it just quits you out of the menu. If you are in a sub-menu, uh, like uh, the K outliner, and you uh, hit return on the prefix of the menu, it'll take you back to the top menu. If you do um, made a... What's made a here? A yeah. command key? Yeah. Made a B, it'll take you back through items, and then it'll cycle around when you... And made a uh, F will move you forward through them. Also, tab will do the same thing. Or shift tab. I often find that I reach for escape to get out of... Escape? To get menus. out of menus? Well, we can bind, you can bind it to escape, yeah. That it's would make that, sense. Within that context. Yeah, so send me a note on that, I'll do it. Um, messaging, here's a cool thing. So let's say you use a lot of, um, you use a lot of um, I implicit buttons, right? So let's go into info, and then we use the action key to uh, go into something, right? But we want to know what the action key does. We have Control H, Capital A. That tells us what the action key does in any contract text. And Control U, Control H, Capital A shows us what the assist key does. But uh, sometimes you're having a problem or you just want to know. So we can go into the hyperbole menu under customization and we can toggle on smart key debugging. And when we do that, um, every time that we hit the action key now, it tells us what it did. So in the mini buffer, it says the context was info mode, and the action was it ran smart info, and the buffer that we did it in was info, and so forth. So, you know, when we come into a new buffer, let's say we're in Scratch, and we just type something, we want to see, gee, does it work to say, uh, let's say, like, this is kind of interesting, a new feature, hyperbole, and then the key binding, let's say, control C, uh, backslash. Um, so that there should be an index entry for that. So when I hit action key on that, um, because I need two backslashes, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's try another key. Control C, Control R. I know it's in there. So I hit return on that, and it takes me right to the index entry describing the rename command in hyperbole across all of the info manual contents. But again, it uh, it gave me a log entry for what the action key did there. So then, after I've like found some issue or I've been logging stuff, then when I go and say under M for messages, I want to send a message to the hyperbole mail list. I say C for compose, and all of those debugging messages are automatically added to the message. To so you can just send it then and say, oh, this is what I did. I was in this context and I pressed this, and and this is what happened. So you know, a couple buttons, and you're you're already you know documenting much more than most people ever do. So the whole time. pedal for hyperbole buttons for the action the assist key. Yeah, yeah. you could have that. Uh, so some of the options that are in there now. Um, uh, I'm not even sure. We have this feature of where hyperbole will automatically override um, local keys that are hiding its global key bindings. So like Control HH, if you had a local key binding of that, the default is uh, to automatically override the local bindings. So it will get rid of those for you and your your global keys will always work when you're using hyperbole unless you turn off that option. Um, I think that concludes our demo right now. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Bob.